Hi, I am Akhilesh Kumar Shivastav in the series of programming of the queues. In today's lecture, we will start with the priority queues. You must be knowing that there are several implementation of the priority queues possible. One of them is the array implementation. We can do it with the linked list implementation as well. And we use the heaps also to implement the priority queues. Each of these implementations have their merits and the demerits. In today's lecture, we will only focus our discussion on the array implementation of the priority queues. We will see how can the array implementation of priority queues be there for two different kinds of scenarios. To understand the priority queues, let us say that we have an array and this array has no elements at the beginning. We are going to insert the elements in this array and we are considering that whatever is the element, the same is reflecting the priority also. This is our assumption. In practical scenario, this may not happen, but in our scenario or in our taken example, we will consider that whatever is the element, the same is the priority. For example, if I have the element seven, then seven is representing the priority also. If I have the element 10, then 10 is representing the priority of that number or the element also. If I have a number one, I will say that this number is having the highest priority. So let's say we have some of the elements and we have to insert these elements in the priority queue. So first is the seven. So seven will be inserted at the first position in the array. Then we have the element 10. 10 will be inserted after seven. Then I have to insert this one for the insertion of this one. I will have to shift the elements towards the right. Then we will make a place for the insertion of this element at the first position. So for the insertion of one or the after the insertion of one, the priority queue looks like this. So it's more like insertion of an element in the sorted array. Similarly, if I have to insert this five, then I will first search in this array, the position of five or the position at which five should be inserted. And then I should insert that element. So if I have to insert this five, obviously the five will be inserted at this position. So the elements seven and 10 will have to be shifted one step ahead. So after the insertion of this five, the priority queue looks like one, five, seven and 10. When we have to insert this 15, 15 will be inserted after 10, it means at the last position. And if I have to insert this three, three will be in, inserted after this one, it means at the position of five, it means these elements will have to be shifted once again, uh, one step ahead. Fine, so after the insertion of the three, the priority queue looks like this, one, three, five, seven, 10, and 15. If I have to serve the, uh, or if I have to provide the services to these numbers or these elements, in that case, I will provide the service to element one first. When I will provide the service to element one, this element one will get deleted. So we are providing the service to the highest priority element and one is having the highest priority. So order of insertion can be any, but when we start deleting or when we are starting uh, to provide the services to these elements, then the highest priority elements will be served first. If I have to provide the service to the next element, then three will be the element that I'll serve. So the order in which the services are provided will be one, three, five, seven, 10, and 15. So here you can see that if you delete the elements or if you provide the services to these elements, then you're obtaining a, or an order. And this order is the ascending order. We can say that this priority queue is the ascending priority queue. Now to implement this insertion process and the deletion process, let's try to write the algorithm. 
I think that we should discuss one more scenario. Let's say we have an element to be inserted, the seven. So to insert the seven, I cannot insert the element seven at this position because seven is larger. I cannot insert the seven element at this position because seven is larger. I cannot insert seven here because seven is larger. I cannot insert the seven element here because this seven has come first. If I am going to serve, then this seven should get the first service, and the next seven which is coming should be getting the next service. So it means the next seven which is coming should come at this position. So after the insertion of the second seven, the priority queue looks like this. So this will we will have to ensure that. If the same element is coming, or the same priority element is coming in the priority queue, then the element which is already available in the priority queue should be served first, and the element which has just come should be served next. So we have to ensure the first come first serve order. If there is a conflict of the priority, if the same priority elements are coming, they will be served in the first come first serve order. So let's try to write the algorithm. To write the algorithm. Let's say we have an array which is being treated as a priority queue. Let's say the size of the array initially is n, or at the current moment the size of the priority queue is n, and the elements which has to be inserted is x. So this is the n q operation that we are writing. In the n q operation, we will first have to find out the appropriate position for the insertion of element x. So for finding out the position of the element you will have to see by the time the element to be inserted is either greater or less than the current element you will keep moving forward so while the element x is greater than or equal to the current element in the array you will keep moving ahead let's say i is the iterator and iterator for this array we will initialize this iterator to 0 so we already have seen uh, several uh, conditions let's say the initial priority queues like this it has three elements 3 5 and 7 if you have to insert the element 6 in this priority queue you will have to check if this 6 is greater than the first element if it is go to the next element and check if this next element if this x is greater than the next element as well you can uh, check here that the 6 is larger than the current element so you move forward so my i is at uh, this index where the element 6 is not larger than element 7 so i have to stop our search here and this i position will be the position where you have to insert this x element fine so in this loop we are able to find out the position at which i have to Insert the element. So I will be the position at which we have to insert the element. Now, once the search is complete, I will have to insert the element. For the insertion of the elements, the element uh, elements which are at i index and after this also, we will have to shift them one step ahead. So let's say we have a function known as array insert function. In this array insert function, we will have to Insert the element x at ith index. So what will happen in this particular scenario where you have to insert six? So three was present, five was seven, six can be inserted here, and seven can be moved one step ahead. Let's say we have to insert the element three here. So if I have to insert this three, then I start with the zero index. and i see that the element x is equal to the current element so i will have to increment this i and i reaches at index number 1 now this x is not larger than the current element i so i will have to insert my 3 or the element 3 at this index for insertion of the element 3 at this index i will have to move these elements one step ahead then a room will be made for the insertion of this element and i will insert that this element 3 at this position so first 7 was moved then 6 was moved and then 5 was moved so i have this 
array after the insertion of three. Now, if I have to insert the elements, then uh, suppose we have to insert an element eight in this priority key. So if this is the current scenario, where you have five elements, three, three, five, six, and seven. And if you have to insert the element eight, these are the indexes. You start your search from the first index. This element eight is larger than the current element. So you move ahead i. This element uh, uh, eight is larger than the next element also. So you increment this i. This is larger than five also. This is larger than six also. And this is larger than seven also. So I will keep moving ahead. The moment I crosses the element seven or I reaches to the five index, I will have to stop our search. Fine. The search will stop because there is no more comparisons possible. It means that the element eight will have to be inserted at the five index. So we will have to stop the search if my I is not within the limit. It means if I is in between zero to n minus one, where n is representing the number of elements in this array, then the searches are possible. But if I has crossed the n minus one, the search will not be possible. It means that to restrict the search, I will have to apply condition I less than n. So these are the both the conditions through which I will be doing this operation. Now let's write the array insert operation. The array insert operation is pretty straightforward, wherein we have been given an array, an index i, and an element x, which is to be inserted. We are assuming that the size of the array is already available to us, and size of the array is n. It means that there are, there are n elements in the array. So I will have to shift all the elements from n minus 1 index to ith index one step ahead. So for j is equals to n minus one. So this is the last index to i. It means up to i index, we will have to make all the elements which are put, which are at the position aj to aj plus one. It means if I if the element is at n minus one index, I will have to shift this element at nth index. If the element is at fourth index, I will have to shift it to the fifth index. Okay. So this is the process of the shifting. Once the shiftings are performed, the room uh, will be free for the insertion of the element. So you can insert the element x at index i. So this is how the insertions are taking place. Now, once the insertions uh, are complete, we have to implement the deletion operation also in the priority queue. So let's say we have Three, three, five, seven, ten, and fifteen. The initial priority queue. And if you have to uh, provide the services or delete the element, in that case, the first element or the zero index element will be deleted. So we are writing the DQ operation. In the DQ operation, an array A is given. This this will be given, and uh, or you can say that the size of the array is also given. The size of the array is let's say n. If you are removing the zero index element from this, you will have to shift all these elements one step back. Fine. So for deletion of the zero index element, all the elements ahead of this will be shifted one step back. So you can do it with a loop, or you can let's say that you are performing or you are calling the array delete function, wherein you are deleting the zero index element. And once the deletion is performed, we will have to return the deleted element. So this is the DQ operation. So in the DQ, it, we just have to remove the zero index element. And after deletion, you will have to shift the elements one step back. Otherwise, a vacant space will be created. That is of no use for us. So if I try to analyze these algorithms, for the insertion, the insertion can take place at the first index. So this is the worst case uh, in which if you are trying to insert the element at zero index, 
then all the other elements will have to be shifted one step. It means the complexity of this operation will be order of n. And if you are deleting the element f for every deletion, wherein the element the array has n elements, order of n shifting will be required. So the insertion operation or the n q and the deletion operation, it means the dq, both will require order of n complexity. Now let's try to write this on the code block. So for implementation of this uh, priority queue, let's come to the, uh, the main first. We have considered that we have a sufficient size array and the initial size of the array is zero. We have declared this n or the size of the array as global variable so that it is available to all the functions. It means array insertion, array deletion, nq and dq operations. So let's say from main, we are calling the nq function. So this nq function has the array and the element to be inserted. Let's say the element to be inserted is 10. Let's come to the nq function. In the nq function, you have accepted the array and the element to be inserted. You have started your search. By the time x is larger than or equal to the current element, you will keep increasing i, which is the iterator of the array a. Once you have found the position, you have to insert this x element at the i of index in the a array. Let's say there is a function array insert that will do this process. After the insertion, let's say you had 10 elements at the beginning. Now, if you insert one element, the size of the array will become 11. So that's why I have incremented the size of the array by one. Let's go to the array insert function. So in the array insert function, you have the array, the index i and the element to be inserted. So from the last index till ith index, you are shifting one ele uh, every element one step ahead. Once the shiftings are performed, you place the element x at the i index. So this is the array insert function. So let's say we are performing the insertion operations only, and let's test if the insertion operations are working fine. So you can see that we have inserted all the elements and we are we are finding the ascending order array after all the insertions. We have performed the insertion of 10, 20, 5, 25, 30, 15, and 40. And after this, we have displayed this array from the zero index onwards. And here is the ascending order array that we obtained. Now let's perform the deletion operation. So as a process of the deletion, you must be accepting, you must be expecting the uh, element five as the first deleted element, element 10 as the next deleted element, element 15 as the next deleted element, and element 20 as the next deleted element. So let's run this. Yes, you can see that after the deletion, the first element is five, the next deletion gives us 10, next deletion gives us 15, next deletion gives us 20, it means the order of the deletion is as per our expectation. Now the problem with this kind of the implementation is that we require order of n shiftings or order of n operations in the insertion and deletion board. We can save some of the time by performing the operations in some other way. For example, if I have to insert the element five, in the array, let's say five is inserted like this. If you have to insert this 10, then insert the element 10 before this five. And then if you have to insert this 15, insert the element before this. If you have to insert the element 20, then insert the element before this. If you have, if you have to insert the element seven, then you insert after this 10. So the array becomes 20, 15, 10, 7, and 5. If you have to insert the element 9, so insert it before 7. So the array becomes 20, 15, 10, 9, 7, and 5. It means we are actually creating a descending order array 
than the ascending order wave. So what benefit we'll get from this? The insertions, for the insertion, we will certainly have to search. And for performing the search and performing the shiftings after the search, you require order of n operations. But if you delete the last element or you serve the last element, then your deletion operation can be performed in order of one time because no shiftings will be required. So we are ensuring that if we are able to uh, implement our, our priority queue with the descending order array, then the insertions can be performed in order of n time, but the deletion can be done in only order of one time, means the constant time. So this is very advantageous for us. So let's implement the priority queue with the help of descending array. So here is the code that I have written. Let's go for the NQ operation. In the NQ operation, when you were searching the element, then you are ensuring that by the time the element is smaller than the current element, you keep increasing the size. The moment array becomes equal or larger, you stop your search there and you insert the element at the current. And when you were performing the deletions, then you are performing the deletion of the last element. It means the n element at the n minus one index. And after the deletion, you have to set the size of the array or the size of the priority queue one less than the previous. So n equals to n minus one, but no shiftings are required. here. So array deletion is not required here. You are just removing the last index element from here. So if you go with the same example that we took uh, for the ascending order array, you're obtaining the same thing. The array that you obtain is in the descending sequence, but if you start deleting the element, then the first element which is deleted is five, next is 10, next is 15, and next is 20. It means you have performed the deletion in the same order as you did it with the ascending order but with a lesser complexity. So I hope you must have understood uh, the concept of uh, the priority queue. In the next lecture, we will discuss about how to implement the priority queue using the linked list. And in the subsequent lectures, we will also understand how to implement the priority queue using the heaps. Thanks for watching this video.